Hello, Internet. Um, right, a couple of little jobs on the Ninja today. Um, I had to tank off yesterday and get the carbs a good clean out it's not been used for a while. Uh, the fuel pipe as well was a bit rotten, so I replaced that. But went for a ride in it yesterday, and uh, down low, it's um, it's really hesitating, not running right. So today, I'm going to have a look at the state of the plugs. I've got some new ones on order, but um, I'm going to have a look at the plugs, just see what they look like. Uh, and look for the blatantly obvious, basically, because, um, yeah, I wasn't happy with the way it performed yesterday. It was all right over 3,000 revs, but anything below that, it, um, it really wasn't happy. So, so going through towns, uh, villages, that kind of thing, speed limits, didn't like it at all. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. So, as you can see, got the back seat off at the moment, and that's obviously just a key latch. Uh, first job is that bracket there, for those that have never done it before. And that French is your front seat off. So 10 mil in there. What I tend to do as well is just turn it around and put it back in its place again, just so you don't lose it. And then from there, give the seat a little twig, give it a little wiggle, and there you go. That's what holds it in at the front. That goes in that peg there, and that's your seat off. Now time to get the tank off. Two bolts at the back and two at the front. All 10 mil. So there you go. Those two bolts are out, and the bracket. Those two bolts are out. Most important bit now is to get your fuel switch off or your handle or the extension on it. The plastic bit, that bit there. Um, it is a Phillips screw in the middle of that. If you don't take that off and you try and lift the tank, you're gonna break it. And good luck getting parts for these bikes. There you go. So that's been taken off. What I tend to do now is give the tank a little lift up like so and just get it resting on there. Just means it's a little bit easier to get into your pipe and as this pipe is quite new obviously put on yesterday it's going to be tight so uh, let's get that off and then the tank should just lift straight off one thing i should have mentioned because i nearly forgot myself um make sure you turn your fuel off <laughs> off yeah nobody wants a, a floor full of fuel There you go, so the pipe's off. Obviously put a bit of cloth underneath there to get the residual fuel that uh, comes off. And now the tank should, or will, lift straight off. And there you go, tank off. So with the tank off, you can get into most things. Um, obviously, airbox has got to come off. Screws around the top there, and then there's some screws in the bottom as well. A couple of pipes, quite uh, straightforward really to get that off. And then where we're getting to is down in there. Get the spark plugs. Right, let's get cracking. So that's the top of the airbox off. Now we've got a got the bolts there and there, and I believe. Let me just get the filter out. Da -da -da, coming out, lovely old K&N. Um, I believe we've got some in the front, or maybe not. Right, let's take those two out. I could be right with just those two. I'll let you know. Yeah, as soon as I turn the camera off, I realise where the other two are. At the back, there's one. On there, and two. There you go. Now pipes off, and it will come off. There you go. Sneak a little one in there. I knew I'd miss one somewhere. Of course, then what you're going to do is um, undo the clamps for the ram air, and uh, yeah, then it should come off. <laughs> and there you go. Airbox off. So yeah, a couple of clamps there, both sides. Um, I can say three bolts at the back two that go in the inside the airbox itself and then it's off um been a while since i've done this so yeah a bit of a refresher right um now yeah let's unclip the coil packs and um yeah let's get the spark plugs out there you go so that's the packs out um not the easiest things to get to especially number four you have to take your uh bracket off completely and sort of push it to one side like that to get them off but um all right let's uh let's get in there get the plugs out all right plug number one out and uh yeah nothing obvious so let's get the rest out so number four is a bit tricky but luckily for me i still have the original toolkit with the original spark plug spanner makes it a lot lot easier so none of them seem to really have a problem but they have been in there a while so they're going to get replaced anyway several days later well welcome back youtube now i say welcome back because for you in this video it's going to be well less than a couple of seconds um but 
let me just explain what's happened. So last time you caught me was about a week ago. Uh, since then, um, I had a few days away uh, in Buxton, video to come. But I was looking at the whole situation and thinking, hmm, you know what, the, the bike's pretty original from brand new. And I looked at the uh, the coil packs and I thought, mm, they look a bit old. They don't smell too great. Yeah, yeah, believe me, they don't smell great. So um, I bought new ones. <laughs> I've splashed out. So I have four, four new coil packs and obviously some nice NGK plugs to put in. And hopefully that will make it run a lot better. Uh, as I think I said in the beginning of the video, it wasn't running great last time I took it out. Uh, and as it's a, a 1998 bike, and it's probably not had an awful lot replaced on it, I thought it was time to do that. So, right, let's get the plugs in, let's get the uh, new coil packs on, and uh, see how she runs. There you go. So, they're all, um, I checked the gaps on them, they're all at um, between 7 and 8, which is where they should be. Um, what I'm going to do now is take every one of these caps off. Be really careful when you do these, don't grab the porcelain because you will break it if you're not careful. But these will unscrew and they're quite tight so you might need a pair of pliers. But yeah, get yourself a spanner or something on there and then gently undo those. Obviously, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So there you go, that's how I brace them. Uh, just put them in the spark plug spanner, be careful, you don't want to brash the electrodes. And then let me just get a pair of pliers and I'll try and do this with yeah, two hands. Not going to be easy. Hold on. There you go. It's a good sturdy pair of flies coming in. Grip on them. Quick tweak. And there you go. That's all it takes. They're on there quite firm. You won't undo them with your fingers, but once you've cracked them with a, a good spanner or something, pliers, not mole grips, but pliers or something like that, they will come off. And that's how you need them. Right, let's get them in. There you go. That's got the plugs all in. And now I'm going to do something that may make the internet very happy. I'm going to talk them up. I know. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Apparently 13 Newton metres is the magic number. Uh, so that's what's going to happen. Go me. Right, and the awkward number four first. Here we go. Talking. Get me. Now, when you put new plugs in, the crush washer, just take a little bit of the crush. So don't be afraid. Look at that. And there we are. We're at talk. Right, let's do the rest. Proper job. And now for the shiny new coil packs. Oh, check them out. Yeah, you don't want to know how much, but let's just say not cheap. In they go. Oh, I took a bit of forcing down. Oh, get in there. Oh, yeah. make the right noises okay so we'll connect it back up again all the wires back on them I did give them a little bit of a press down with a, a wooden stick just to make sure that uh, they were properly seated I did click one more time so worth doing right now what I'm gonna do is just start it up just to make sure that we're good basically because um, you know just want to make sure that the new stuff worked don't see a reason why it shouldn't but let's try it anyway a little bit of choke we're out of gear, so... That'll do. That, to me, sounds sweeter already. So, yeah, happy with that. Right, let's get everything back together. And, um, yeah, who knows, maybe even take for a run this afternoon. That'd be nice. Right, first step, airbox back on. There we go. Cleaned it up a little bit. So obviously what you want to do first is get your ram air pipes in there, that side and that side, and then wiggle it together. Now these pipes do turn, and as you can see, they're not lining up at the moment. So you just got to manipulate them a bit while it all drops on. But when they're in line, it just drops in. So let's get that on. There you go. That's the bottom bit back on. Um, as I say, are a bit of a pain to get on. You kind of got to manipulate these into place. Uh, and just move them around but they do drop in and uh, once you got it in everything fits into place like that okay 
So just get all the bolts back in and then get the top back on again and then the tank and that's that's pretty much it. Right, let's crack on. So just to go over the bolts again, one on the inside there, one on the inside there, one there and don't forget your harness strap as well when you put that back on, your bracket there with one 10 mil there, all 10 mil heads obviously. Uh, so you'll have to find the 10 mil socket, good luck with that. Uh, your harness strap there as well and a 10 mil there and then obviously pipe back on there. You've got a pipe that goes oop, on there like that. That's obviously to let out any fluid that's in there. That one is a breather, I believe. Uh, and again, just one of those little clamp clips there. That's the bottom bit done. The top bit, fairly easy. Again, don't forget your harness straps. You've got one just there and one on the other side as well. And there you go, tank's back on again. Uh, biggest pain in the backside is obviously getting your fuel pipe back on, which is hidden right up there. It's, it's not easy, got to put the tap on yet, but literally a two minute job. Seat's back on, but don't forget your anchor point. So that goes in there like that, um, it slots in. Let me see if I can get you in a better position. So basically that bit holds the seat at the end there. That bit just slots onto the seat, onto there, and then your retaining 10 mil Oop, goes <laughs> again, not easy with one hand. Your retaining 10 mil goes in there, and then obviously your seat doesn't go anywhere. Right, let's bolt her up. And one of the last jobs for me is to put back the uh, rocking horse poo that is. The original toolkit. Yeah, two hands. There you go, back in pride of place again. Just in case you're wondering, this is my charging connection. Uh, that is what they call a, I've got to think what it is now, it's from my old RC days, uh, EC5 I think, off the top of my head. That goes to the battery and then all I have to do is set the back seat off and I can charge the battery up when it's sitting in the garage. Otherwise you've got to set the main seat off all the time, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. Right, I'm now going to wheel her outside and um, yeah, start the rope. Okay, fuel on. Quick check for leaks. No, we're good. Here we go. Oh, it's hiding the garage a bit. I've got to say, that does sound so much better. So much better. Right, so that does sound better. Obviously the proof's going to be in the riding. Um, I've got a dilemma now. I can see um, the wind's getting up. <laughs> Step back in here because you're probably getting terrible wind noise. Yeah, the wind is getting up. It was windy when we was in Buxton. Uh, we left there this morning. And uh, a bit cold as well up north, <laughs> especially when you go up the hills. Uh, so do I go for a ride or do I change the oil? Because I've got a new oil and filter for it as well. But that will be a separate video, whatever I do. But anyway, there you go. That is me. Um, <laughs> was going to quickly change the spark plugs, turned into, well, a lot more. Um, and, and Thank you. It agrees. Um, so, yeah, it turned into a lot more and became a lot more expensive. But I think it, it's going to benefit from it, definitely. 
Um, there you go. Right, let's let's hope it being a Saturday today. Saturday and Sunday is going to be a nice outlook, and the wind calms down a little bit, and I might get to use her. Anyway, thanks for joining. I'll talk to you later.